Chapter Two of The Adventures of Poor Mrs. Quack. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Francis Brown. The Adventures of Poor Mrs. Quack by Thornton W. Burgess. Chapter Two. Mrs. Quack is distrustful. Jerry Muskrat thinks there is no place in the world like Smiling Pool. So, for the matter of that, does the Grandfather Clock and also the Spotty Turtle. You see, they have spent their lives there and know little about the rest of the great world. When Mrs. Quack explained that all she feared was a two-legged creature with a terrible gun might find her there, Jerry Muskrat hastened to tell her that she had nothing to worry about on that account. No one hunts here now that Farmer Brown's boy has put away his terrible gun, exclaimed Jerry. There was a time when he used to hunt here and set traps, which are worse than terrible guns. But that was long ago, before he knew any better. Who is Farmer Brown's boy? demanded Mrs. Quack, looking more anxious than ever. Is he one of those two-legged creatures? Yes, said Peter Rabbit, who had been listening with all his ears. But he is the best friend we quaddies have got. He is such a good friend that he ought to be a quaddy himself. Why, this winter he fed some of us when food was scarce, and he saved Mrs. Grouse when she was caught in a snare, which is a kind of trap. He won't let any harm come to you here, Miss Quack. I wouldn't trust him, not for a single little minute, declared Mrs. Quack, Oh, I wouldn't trust one of those two-legged creatures, not one. You say he fed some of you last winter, but that doesn't mean anything good. Do you know what I've known these two-legged creatures to do? What? demanded Peter and Jerry together. I've known them to scatter food where we ducks would be sure to find it, and to take the greatest care that nothing should frighten us while we were eating. And then, after we'd gotten to the habit of feeding in that particular place, and had grown to feel perfectly safe there, they have hidden close by until a lot of us were feeding together, and then fired their terrible guns and killed a lot of my friends, and dreadfully hurt a lot more. I wouldn't trust one of them, not one. Oh, how dreadful, cried Peter, looking quite as shocked as he felt. Then he added eagerly, but our Farmer Brown's boy wouldn't do anything like that. You haven't the least thing to fear from him. Perhaps not, said Miss Quack, shaking her head doubtfully. But I wouldn't trust him. I wouldn't trust him as far off as I could see him. Ah, oh, the Smiling Pool is a very nice place, although it is dreadfully small. But if Farmer Brown's boy is likely to come over here, I guess I had better look for some other place, though goodness knows where I will find one where I will feel perfectly safe. You are safe right here if you have sense enough to stay here declared Jerry Muskrat rather testily. Don't you suppose Peter and I know what we're talking about? Oh, I wish I could believe so, returned Miss Quack. But if you had been through what I've been through and suffered what I've suffered, you wouldn't believe any place safe. And you certainly wouldn't trust one of those two-legged creatures. Why, for weeks they haven't given me a chance to get a square meal, and, and I don't know what has become of Mr. Quack, and I'm all alone. There was a little sob in her voice and tears in her eyes. Tell us about it, begged Peter. Perhaps we can help you. End of chapter 3. Recording by Francis Brown.